The adventuring party crept slowly down the dark passage, ever aware of the dripping sound. Somewhere ahead of them were their missing friends and the foul creature known only as the reptile god. Up ahead, the thief investigated a door. It was swollen shut by the humidity of this place. The dripping, the dripping that led, they followed, the dripping. The little halfling motioned behind him. He crept out of the way, and the two burly fighters moved up. Unable to open the door, they flung their bodies at it again and again until finally it burst open and they stumbled inside. As they sought to gain their bearings, a corpse stumbled to its feet. The fighters charged forward, the corpse's arms outstretched. Its fingers curled. The magic user and cleric surged forward from their position in the rear to enter the room. The fighters circled warily around the corpse creature, looking for an opening. The fighter pressed his attack in an attempt to bring the creature down. The cleric stirred boldly forward and presented his holy symbol. But the god of luck was not to be with him this day. The creature was unfazed. The cleric yelled to fall back, for this foul beast was much too powerful for them. The magic user released his energy. In a mad dash, the party fled from the room, slamming the door behind them. Once again, the party crept forward down the tunnel, unknown to them that one of their own had chosen to turn around, to go back, to go back to that room with the corpse. He entered it. The corpse rose, but he was ready, and he tackled it, bringing it down. Again and again he plunged his pummeled fist into it. Again and again he sank his dagger into the creature, until finally it moved no more. Feeling triumphant, he stood and boldly walked across the room to the door waiting on the other side. The door that perhaps led to the reptile god. When suddenly he felt about his neck the clawing fingers of the corpse creature. He was unable to gasp for breath and in a panic began to flail. But eventually he stopped moving and the corpse collapsed to the floor with him on top. And that is the story of how Zadarius died. Who could truly say why the fighter decided to go back? Was he seeking glory? Riches? Did he know something about that room beyond? It didn't matter. In the end, he was just one more corpse in the dungeon. Never split the party.